beautiful life. สวัสดีครับ Good afternoon and welcome to a beautiful life on EnglishOnline.rmutp.ac.th. My name is a j a n Kasem Kasem p u t a r u n g s i your host. For the program, a beautiful life is a program broadcasted every Monday from 1 p.m. to 1:30 p.m. I record an information about life lessons or good phrases from the book or website will be presented in this program together with the latest news from l a c h a m o n g o n University of Technology p r a n a k o n for you to enjoy. Today we start with the article from China News Asia. They say salt is critical in Asian cuisine, but we are eating too much of it. Reducing our sodium intake is a small measure that can save lives and healthcare costs. But Singapore's hawker center is heavy on salt, say cookbook author Pamelia Chia. Pamelia Chia reported from Singapore. Nine in ten Singaporeans consume too much salt. Surveys conducted from 2021 to 2022 showed that the average local consumes 3,620 milligram of sodium a day, when the recommended daily intake for healthy adults is 2,000 milligram, or about a teaspoon of salt. Sodium is an essential nutrient required by the human body to perform daily functions, and our kidneys are fine-tuned to keep sodium concentrations in the blood within healthy levels. Unfortunately, when there is a chronic excess of sodium in the body, the kidneys can become strained, resulting in Rate blood pressure a precursor to debilitating illness such as heart disease and stroke. To be sure, diminishing a macronutrient or micronutrient, fat, carbohydrates, sugar, or sodium is never a good thing. However, a reduction of our daily sodium intake. Is a small measure that can save lives and annual healthy care healthcare costs. A home cook will total control over the amount of salt added to meals. However, given the, that a sizable proportion of Singaporean eat out rather than cook the main source of sodium in the average Singaporean diet comes from uh, from comes not from Salt shaker at home, but from external sources. According to the Health Promotion Board, 31% of meal eaten outside of the home contain more than the daily recommended amount of sodium. In particular, food from hawker centers, which provide Singaporean residents with inexpensive and excellent cuisine, is known to be heavy on salt. Challenges in reducing salt intake. With food where salt plays a critical function beyond flavor, reducing salt can be an uphill challenge. For decades, salt has been used in Asian cu- culture as a means of extending the chef life of food, particularly in a time where refrigerators were not mainstream. Salted egg that accompany porridge, preserved radish that stir omelets, and salted fish that are slipped into curry are all examples of how interwoven pressure foods are in our food culture. It is not just salinity that salt lends to these foods. Salt inhabits. Bacterial action, thus allowing raw ingredients to be transformed to a alchemy of time. Anyone who has tasted salted egg yolks would be able to attest to how they taste. Uncannily, like cheese, 
complex and full flavored. Seemingly in nutritious spheres of fish paste in bowls of fish ball noodle, noodle soup are also major sodium culprits, but it is difficult to lower their salt content without compromising texture. This is because salt allows the muscle proteins of fish to form a gelatinous matrix that gives fish balls their characteristic become uh, bounces, just like how salt is essential in producing a hot dog that snaps. But for the most part, Pamela Shia believed that the sodium crisis stems from deeply held cultural norms and perceptions while reading about adobo from the Philippines. Familiar Chia learned that it is not uncommon to encounter intentionally saltier versions, both home-cooked or commercial sold, so that eater would be encouraged to eat more rice, thereby stretching the ditch between more mouths. An echo of this re resides in economical rights or chai peng stores in Singapore, where a generous amount of rights is offered to provide bland relief to the intensely flavored dishes that accompany it. This might have been a way of cooking that began in the, a time when people did not have much means but the habit has stuck, and the end result is more carbohydrates and sodium on one's plate. While there are health-conscious consumers who would request for their dishes to be made with less salt or soy sauce, a challenge to these alternatives being mainstream lies in the public perception that low-sodium products lack flavor. To some, promoting healthy eating is to the detriment of hawker food culture. The example of pork lard, which has practically been banished from Singapore in the name of healthy eating, comes to mind. Many older Singaporeans that Pamela Chia know have lamented about how difficult it is to find chakutiao with pork lard these days. For a nation of food eats, placing health benefits before enjoyment of food can be a difficult pill to swallow. Pamela Chia remember once being told by an aunt of her, amid the ever-changing health needs in the media, that life is short and meant to be savored, not endured. Sodium redu reduction without the fanfare. Adding an excess of sodium, both in the form of cooking salt and monosodium, monosodium glutamate or MSG, is a way to make up for a lack of flavor or to disguise cheap ingredients when food is made from quality ingredients and lavishes with the luxury of time. It can be flavorful even with minimal seasonings. Sam Wong from the popular Lucky House Cantonese private kitchen, for example, is known for his low boiled soups that contain no additional salt or sugar, solely an expression of meaty bones and time. Given the extraordinarily low price selling at hockey centers, it is no wonder that hawker have to rely heavily on seasoning in order to introduce flavor to their dishes. Educating the public on the true cause of hockey food is key, and a long-term solution to putting a real dent in the sodium crisis. In the interim, while hawkers can be encouraged to reduce the amount of salt that they add, at the end of the day, they are business owners who 
practice caution in making tweaks to their offering that may drive customer away. For this reason, it might be worth providing incentives in the form of rental subsidies of for hawker who choose to provide healthier options. Education of hawker across the bro the broad would also help as awareness of sodium's impact on their cus customer will then result in change that springs from altru altruism rather than a reluctant abiding to stipulation and guidelines. This will allow the level of sodium in our food to be reduced gradually without fanfare, which might be the least alarming and most effective strategy of all. Pamela Chia is the author of Cookbooks with Market to Table and Plantation, a West a vegetarian cookbook through Asia. She also writes Singapore Noodle, a newsletter with the mission of keeping Singaporean food heritage alive. Next, from China News Asia, they say for these, uh, for those with chronic conditions, Chinese New Year fates can be stressful. The holiday season brings joy, but also straight for people with diabetes, hyper hypertension, or high blood pre high blood cholesterol. Say dietitian Jacqueline Royton's. Jacqueline Royton reported from Singapore. She said by the time Chinese New Year rolled around, we for those people who live in Singapore would have been attending holiday parties for weeks. With Christmas and New Year in the recent parts, this onslaught of festive food and drink can pose a challenge to even the the sternness of views and those with diabetes and similar conditions must try even harder to keep their diet in check. High blood glucose, high blood cholesterol, and high blood pressure, also chronically known together as the three heights of aging and conditions that require a modified diet to manage. In Singapore, they affect a significant percentage of the population as about 9% of adults have diabetes, 32% have high blood cholesterol, and 37% have high blood pressure. It is not uncommon for people to have all three conditions at the same time. Most adults with diabetes often have at least one comorbidity, and the two most common are hypertension or high blood pressure and hyperlipidemia or high cholesterol if not managed properly. These conditions could lead to serious disease and even death. Reckless eating during the festive season often results in a spike in these three heights. Then there is a then there is the added pressure of family and friends. Some may encourage those watching their diets to indulge because this does this does not happen every day. Conversely, loved ones may police each other sugars and sodium intake out of the scent of care, but too much necking that can drive those with dietary restrictions to eat in secret. So how can someone with a chronic condition safely navigate the holidays, both from a social and medical perspective? Fasting she cheat. First, honor your diet by washing what you consume, limit carbohydrates, saturated fat, and sodium. This means taking very little curded meat. Anything with battle might not be a good idea because of its high saturated fat and sodium content. 
the a t e r y fiber can help control the intake of these threads. Adding more vegetables to your plate is one way to ensure that you are getting food without derailing your diet. As for drinks, opt for water as much as possible and avoid sugary beverages if you want to enjoy more of the holiday goodies on the table. Alcohol can cause shirts of drop. Uh, Alcohol can cause such o u t drops in glucose level for those living with diabetes, and can contribute to increased blood pressure. If you decide to have a drink, keep it to one and try to have it rather food, uh, and keep and try to have it after food, which can help slow the about the absorption of alcohol. Second. Take control of your situation. If you are in party guest, the most might expect you to eat more than you ought to, and start putting food on your plate. To avoid this, always have food on your plate, even if you don't end up eating all of it. Another way you can take control is to prioritize what you want to eat. Knowing your limits, would you rather have a pineapple tart or the n i a n g a o instead? Want both? Then cut your portions to accommodate those craving. This way, you can have your cake and eat it too. Third, eat slow and in order. Eating slower, especially when having a big meal, can help avoid a spike in blood glucose and The sequence of it, the sequence of what you eat, can also affect your blood glucose levels. Starting with protein, fats, and fiber slows down the digestion of carbohydrates, thereby improving the blood glucose levels following a meal. Fourth, for people with diabetes, monitor your blood glucose. The American Diabetes Association recommends checking your blood. Glucose levels before your meal, and again one to two hours after eating. Picking your fin- finger isn't easy in a social situation, so consider continuous glucose monitoring system that captures and stores glucose data every minute, giving real-time feedback on your st- smartphone without the need to draw blood. Having insight into how your body reacts to different foods will allow you to manage your condition better, even beyond the holidays. Fifth, walk it off. As cliche as it sounds, a little bit of exercise does go a long way. Walking before and after a meal helps your body process what you eat. You don't need to spend hour in the gym just to enjoy a meal. Five to fifteen minutes of exercise is enough. And the last one, helping loved ones. If you are caring for someone with chronic health condition, make sure that they feel supported during the festive season. If you are preparing the food, adjust the recipe to accommodate their ends. Use less sugar and salt. Avoid using vegetable oil, or use alternative ingredients like coconut milk in place of dairy. This way, you can help them enjoy the holiday feast with a little less guilt. If you find your loved one enjoying a treat, don't scold. Instead, give them the benefit of the doubt, as it could be their first and only one. Keep an eye out without hovering, and create an environment where they are more open to discussing their dietary choices rather than have them in doubt in secret. The holiday season brings joy, but it can also a, uh, it also be quite stressful, even more so for people with the three the h i n d s 
However, having a new of the three hides should not hide r you from celebrating. The secret is in learning how to manage the situation and having the right support. Why you shouldn't throw caution to the wind? You can still enjoy Chinese New Year goodies or two off. You know what you are doing. Jacqueline Broughton is a clinical and sports dietitian at Optima Nutrition. So you can read more about this from Channel News Asia. We'll be right back after a short break. Beautiful life. You are listening to a beautiful life on English Online. r m u t p a c t h We are back to the news. First, from l a c h m o n g k o n University of Technology, p r a n a k o n open to every opportunity in urban society. r m u t p Open House 2024. Dr. n a t w a r a p o n r a t s e r i w a c h a r a b u n the president of l a c h m o n g k o n University of Technology, p r a n a k o n said that throughout 19 years, the university has focused on developing. The workforce of the future, or future workforce, by introducing modern technology as the basis for teaching and learning. Throughout their studies at university, students will learn through the real world of work. In addition, the university also strengthened the curriculum by creating a network of academic cooperation with many leading industries. In the country, allow students to learn skills from people with real experience, to focus on producing graduates to meet the end of the labor market. It also rates the level of education, and this year is still a big year through organizing r a c h m o n g k o n University of Technology p a n a k o n Open to every opportunity in urban society or RMGDP open house opportunity unlocked between 17 to 18 January 2024 at Panacon Commercial Center. The university has the idea to create ed- the educational opportunities for everyone to have greater access to the ed- education system. Those are the university focuses on everyone being able to learn without their lives, or genders, or ages, or statutes. The first group is the working group, who is already working but want to develop their potential or want to change their career. They can come to study and develop new career skills, upskill, and reskill through short-term courses offered by the university, such as flower arrangement, automotive mechi- uh, mechanics, electricians, and etc., including opening opportunities for workers who have graduated with less than a bachelor's degree, both vocational certificate. Or power saw level, high vocational certificate or power saw program, m a t e r i a l six or equivalent, have the opportunity to continue their education to have higher qualities and have skills that meet the ends of the establishment, adapt and work with innovation, modern technology. The second group of vulnerable groups and people with the Disability. The unity has collaborated with the Network Association for promoting and development of quality of life for people with disability and the underprivileged. Or สมาคมส่งเสริมพัฒนาคุณภาพชีวิตคนพิการและผู้ด้อยโอกาส and the Office of Special Education Administration. Or สำนักบริหารงานการศึกษาพิเศษ Office of the Best the Basic Education Commission ออกสำนักงานคณะกรรมการการศึกษาขั้นพื้นฐาน This will provide opportunities for people with disabilities 
to enter high education according to their potential. This is open to those with hearing disability, eye disability, or physic, physical disability, who are interested in continuing their studies in both short-term courses or degree level, with free of charge from enrollment until bachelor's degree, along with receiving as assistive technology. Media services and any other assistance in education according to educational standards and quality assurance. Our system is able to allow everyone to learn from life. The university's expectation is not that everyone must have a college degree, but the university want to want everyone to have. A professional throughout study short courses such as cooking, so that they can use the knowledge to make a living to support themselves and their families. But if in the future those who want to continue their studies, they can use the knowledge they have learned to transfer and adjust their qualification as well. Said. The president said, "Dr. Narvarapun Ratsiri Wacharabun also said that there were many activities at the event that reflects potential, such as displaying researches, innovation, and innov and inventions. Opening of exhibition, both introducing courses from nine faculties and four departments, displaying musical talent." From students of the Faculty of Business Administration, for them to talk with senior and alumni, famous seniors invite you to sit and chat. Or Run P. Kondang, Chun Nang Kui, who will come and talk about their lives and the past and the opportunities they receive at the university, including Yun. p u s a n u w o n g s a w a n i c h a k o n actor and model, who once have been d e n k a n a in 2020 in 2013, Noi Paramed, s a i s u t i students from the Faculty of Home Economics Technology Award winning from many international and uh, from many national and international cooking competition cham champions. โยพัทรวดีมีสุนา News Anchor at NBT Second to HD Channel and TikTok Content Creator would be the host for this event. Moreover, there would have student recruitment at the event, applying for free, having the an interview and know the result immediately. And the time is up for today. A beautiful life. Please join us on every Monday here on EnglishOnline.RMUTP.AC.TH. Your host has been Ajahn Kasem Kasem Putra r e o n g s i You are welcome to subscribe to our channel on EnglishOnline.RMUTP.AC.TH. Thank you very much for joining our program today, and see you again next Monday. สวัสดีครับ Beautiful life will be back again next Monday. 